the programme uh, premiered a few days ago on Sky Arts. And uh, with me, I have Julian Jones, uh, the director, and Helen Conlon, uh, the producer. Um, I watched it last night, I confess, only in 2D, but it was pretty good. It was, um, it was I, I, I found it um, refreshing, uh, contemporary, but in a kind of a nice sort of old-fashioned way, in a, in a way. What, what, um, you know, what, what was sort of the aim, setting aside the 3D elements for a moment, what was the, uh, the kind of feel you were trying to create with this? Um, well, I think from the beginning we didn't, uh, we didn't want to make a traditional documentary in the sense of having you know, talking heads and narration sort of telling you what to think about Leonardo. We wanted Leonardo to do the talking himself. Really, and so, you know, I guess literally the the aim of the film was to do, as it says on the tin, essentially was to kind of open Leonardo's notebooks, and and there were several thousand things as well, weren't there? Yeah, so he left behind thousands and thousands of pages of notebooks, and and um, and they kind of offer a glimpse, obviously at, at his myriad of of scientific and artistic pursuits, but also at the more kind of human and mundane um, areas of his life. Um, and we just wanted to let Leonardo do the talking, really, and just kind of use 3D to create an experience of literally going inside the notebooks, and, 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 and you know, so you can kind of judge for yourself what kind of what kind of man he is. And yes, it is it is quite old-fashioned, if you like. I wonder if that's maybe in a good way. I would, would stress 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 that side of things because there are elements. Uh, uh, Peter Capaldi, who uh, was was Leonardo. In many ways, it was like a, a, the old-fashioned element of it, if you like, just a traditional one-hander performing to the, to the camera but, and acting as a sort of a, I guess, as a subtle narrator because there wasn't any narration as such. His was the only, only voice you heard. Yeah, well, I think, I think we wanted to use the 3D... Um, well, I should just backtrack. When, when I started writing the script and coming at it from having never done 3D before, I went to watch the 3D things that were out at the time and I saw... Hugo and that great dance movie, and I can't Pina. remember who directed that, Pina. Yeah. Um, and my favorite bit in Hugo, there was lots of amazing visuals and things swirling around. My favorite bit was a moment where Ben Kingsley was sat on a bed and there was no music, there was no special effects and he was sobbing. And I just felt a real kind of intimacy with that. It suddenly felt like theater. Um, and in Pina, there's some great shots of, of the dancers, just portraits of them looking out at you. Um, uh, and you're kind of hearing their thoughts. Um, and again, it just felt very intimate, and I thought that was a great way of approaching Leonardo. So not to, not to kind of see Leonardo from 10 different angles in a very kind of you know, fast-cut way, but just to present it as theatre, very slow tracking moves or just you know, something that would create an intimacy and not remind you that you're watching a film, but you know, try and bring you as close to this actor, to Leonardo, as you could kind of possibly get. And Helen, for you, this was also your first foray into, yeah. in, in, into three, 3D. What are there, I, from the producer's perspective, are there, are, are there differences or is it just, um, just reusing the, the skills you already have in a slightly different way? Um, I think it probably is just reusing, developing the skills you already have. You know, um, we were still looking at trying to do a combination of documentary style filming and elements, <coughs> drama elements. Um, and travel log, I guess, at times almost yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Extent. So you're, you know, we spent a lot of time shooting in Italy. So it's still that kind of planning those logistics, making it all work um, for the various partners, broadcasters involved, um, and and to budget. So it's the same challenges as with every show. But obviously, it was something new on the technical side, and not just sort of getting your head around the technology. It was the impact that that technology has on how you make it, how you shoot it, how long things take. All that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was a lot of learning in the kind of initial stages, um, just so that we could feel confident we were on the right path and we were going to be able to achieve, you know, that vision that you know that was there. Um, so yes, it was it was a big challenge, definitely, but one that ultimately I enjoyed and I think we enjoyed. And um, yeah. And on good. the funding side, there was uh, obviously it ran on on Sky here in the UK, but mm -hmm. there was funding I noticed in the credits coming in from a from a number of sources. Yes, yeah, so we um, had lots of partners, Sky here, Sky 3D and Sky Arts, and then History in the States, um, History Films and History uh, Channel. 
and then it was a Canadian co-production, so we made uh, use of uh, all the tax credits available there, and BBC Worldwide took it as well. So yes, it's kind of, it was a big partnership between lots of people. Yeah. Okay. Right. We've got a couple of uh, clips uh, to to see. Let's see the the first of those if we can. Julian, do you want to sort of give us a a, a little a little lead in? Uh, yeah. Sure. I think I've chosen two clips. The first clip is um, the first shot. After, after the titles and what we tried to do at the beginning, the first act, if you like, is, is sort of setting the scene of Tuscany where Leonardo came from and the kind of the world that he experienced and that would then, you know, inspire everything um, he, he would do. So, so visually, I guess the idea was to kind of suck the audience into, into, into his world and, and, and to try and see the world through his eyes. And then the second clip is more of a kind of a... CG extravaganza when, when he's, uh, he's wanting to build lots of very scary um, killing machines. And, uh, and it you know, shows a contradiction in his life. He, kind of, he, he, he loves nature. He's a vegetarian. He's a very gentle soul. But then he also wants to kill lots of people with, in, in terrible ways with his, <laughs> with his uh, machines. I think we saw there, actually, some of the the contrasts between the various elements of the, uh, of the film, the, uh, the, the Peter Capaldi with the little, almost, dare I say, Sherlock-style script uh, appearing, uh, appear, appearing on the screen there, some of the animation as, as well, and that wonderful uh, photography of the, uh, of the bird in, in flight. And it was fun. I don't know how many of you were in the other session. There was a, a question of the audience uh, saying that... Uh, 3D is marketed too much on things coming out of the screen. Well, there was something coming out of the screen, and it just looked beautiful. Probably one of the few times that something does come out of the screen, actually. And I think um, that second clip, if we can maybe play the rest of that uh, later, that is probably, you know, there's cannonballs flying around and so on. But I think initially, when the idea was conceived, it was very much, you know, we were complete 3D novices, and it was very much... Okay, we'll have you know Leonardo with things flying around his head, and all these things will come to life, and and you and know all of the all of the bits, if you like the the, the comedy three mm -hmm. D, what everybody kind of expects it to be, as opposed the to kind of what stuff. you can make with the craft. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And 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 once we sort of got our heads into three D a bit more, we realised that there was much more to it than that, and and we could use it to create depth and intimacy and and so on, rather than using it for any kind of non-editorial, slightly gimmicky reason. Just, just, just for the sake of it. Did you, when you, when you first, when the, let's go right to the beginning. When you first said, right, we're going to do a project of Leonardo, were you saying we're going to do something in 3D? Or was the 3D an element that came, um, I don't know, as part of that original creative process? Well, you were there at the beginning. Yeah, you? I mean, this project had a little bit of history before Julian and I kind of came on. It had been developed um, at Dangerous Films. And... Uh, so the talk of 3D was already there when we came on board. Um, <coughs> uh, I think it was actually Peter, who was Peter Lovery, who was the executive producer, uh, was talking about 3D. Um, just because I think from the very beginning, it was very much about bringing the notebooks to life um, and how could you do that in a new way and a different way. And obviously one of the elements was looking at all of his basically diary entries in his notebooks. People had seen the sketches and the drawings, were very familiar with those as 2D images. Um, so it was kind of how could we bring the person to life through the writing and how could we bring the images to life in a new way. And I think probably at that time 3D uh, felt like something that you know, would be a way of doing that. How long that ago are we before. talking here in terms, in terms of time? It's probably now. It was kind of in development for almost 18 months before we made it, and that was uh, almost 18 months ago, so sort of three okay, years ago. So maybe. we're very much at the early, early, yes. early, early stages, at least from the, from the television perspective, certainly. Yeah. Well, and I think maybe Cave of Forgotten Dreams had come out, and there you were talking about iconic 2D artworks that were brought to life using 3D in that kind of special way. Mm. and, and yeah, as Julian was saying, that kind of immersive connection with the person and the, and, the, and the images themselves. So, yes, I think that's probably where the 3D was first talked about. Um, and yeah. and along, along the way, did you, um, you know, how much experience on the, in, on the team as a whole did you have in, in 3D production? Did you need to uh, 
phone a friend and get some get some yeah. advice from time to time. <laughs> we certainly did a lot, <coughs> we of, did that, a lot of that. Yeah. But we were I mean I was certainly very keen. Not I hadn't done 3D before at all obviously and I was very keen to not hire people to be part of the project just because they'd done 3D. You know, I wanted to hire people for creative reasons. So so the cinematographer, um, uh, one of the cinematographers, Dwayne, had he'd never done 3D before. The people that did all the, the, the graphics, a Canadian company called um, Township, they'd never done any, any stereo stuff before. So it was a like, vertical learning curve for a lot of people. Um, <coughs> but then we, we, we had fantastic backup from, from guys like Vision 3 and on the site who, you know, we just asked, constantly asked lots of what I did, lots of very yeah, stupid questions. questions. Yeah. Um, so, and then when we were all on the shoot, we had, you know, we had a, an expert crew backing us up. So, so it, was, it was a kind of a good mix. Really. But I wonder also, though, the, the, the fact, almost the fact that you hadn't done 3D before could have potentially acted mm. as, uh, as, as an advantage, seeing it from, from, fre from fresh eyes, yet at the same time, Having the people you can, um, I would say, fall back on, but the people you could lean on gently, <coughs> in in order to um, you know, bring forward what you were looking to do. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think what was key was that the editorial remained the focus in all the partnerships, even where we were sort of tackling technical challenges and rig sizes and crew sizes and budgets and things like that. The important thing was that both on site, all the team at Vision 3 and Julian were just focused on the editorial and the creative side and making the 3D work for the ideas rather than being a slave to the 3D. So, and I think we kind of went probably back and forth on a few things to figure out how to do it, but ultimately that stayed the focus, the storytelling, and um, everybody was focused on doing that, which meant it kind of But worked. was it something you maybe felt you spent too much time on? I know, I guess sometimes with these things you can never spend too much time, but if, if there was perhaps a, a moment when you got bogged down on a, on a particular element of the, uh, of, of, of the film simply because of a, a, a lack of knowledge about the 3D process? I don't think so, because I think once we got onto the location or onto, or onto the set, what was interesting was, you know, you, usually when you make a film, you have a kind of creative duo of the director and the cinematographer. But what was interesting now is now the stereographer became a trio. You had the stereographer as well. And, he, and, and, and Matt, who was stereographer and also um, became DOP as well later on, he became an integral part of the team, really. Um, you know, a conversation would usually be along the lines of me saying, I want to do this, and then Matt saying, no, that's, gonna, that's not going to work. <laughs> that's going to be crap. <laughs> okay, no, okay no, let's not do that, no. Um, but, um, well, uh, Peter Capaldi's, uh, the, way we, the way we shot him, I mean, that was something very interesting. I would have probably done it differently if it had just been, you know, a 2D film, and we ended up, shoot, we ended up shooting him in this big room and keeping him against a wall a lot of the time, you know, to keep the kind of, to, to get the, the 3D volume. Yeah, the, the depth. I mean, when he was sitting on the chair, and I loved the way the stuffing yeah. was, coming, was, was, was coming out of this, at the side of the arms there. Yeah, uh, uh, and, now but, the but element set, of set depth. quite back yes. against the wall. Yes. And if it had been a 2D film, you know, wouldn't have done it like that. You know, you would have pulled him right out and you wanted, would have tried to create create depth that way. So um, it was a very, the, uh, the, the set for the Capaldi sequence was, was, quite, was quite plain, really. Like the sort of, this, the, I don't know, what was it, a loft, an attic, a cellar room? A, a, a disused church in, right. in, yeah. in uh, Peckham. Renaissance Peckham. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, it's yeah, no, I think we wanted to keep it quite simple. We didn't want to kind of veer into the sort of quills and velvet hat territory of sort of drama reconstruction, so we wanted to try and make sure. It's interesting. It I, 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 I expected Capaldi to come on with a beard, but uh, I, would say I was disappointed. It was very much done just, uh, just using the, skill, the skills of the actor to bring that forward. And yeah, never quite figured out what, uh, how to describe his role. It was almost like he's the ghost of the notebooks, if you like, or, you know, he's the no we're channeling the notebooks f through him rather than him being, you know, in a very straight drama sense. Here is Leonardo with his, with his kind of long beard and so on. For my, for my collection of daft questions, is it but the, the choice of uh, Peter Capaldi, does that make a difference? Does you need a, an actor who has a, a particular, you always need an actor with presence, that's kind of the point, but uh, between 2D and, and, and 3D, is, is there any, is it, is, it, is it still just you get the good actor in, or do you maybe think <laughs> about somebody who can express themselves as he clearly was there with uh, arm movements and semi-clenching of, of, of hands? 
Um, well, we just wanted a really good actor. I don't, I don't think I, I don't think the extra dimension made any difference there. I mean, the, the, the important thing was that whoever played Leonardo had you know, was believable as possibly the world's mm. greatest genius. And, and 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 Peter is a very very smart guy, and he has this kind of intellectual sparkle about him. Mm. Um, and also, he's a, he's a he's a trained artist himself, so he kind of understood a lot of what Leonardo was talking about. And the about, placements and the staging for where he, where he would stand, you said about shooting it back, did that also have to, did he have to, to be um, maybe positioned in a, in a slightly different way to how that would have been for a, a regular 2D? I think, l I, maybe if it was more, if it had been 2D, we might have moved the camera around a bit more, possibly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of our choices, you know, as I said before, was about creating a sense of theatre, but also they were logistical as well because you know we didn't have a huge budget we had three days to shoot two days to shoot three all, of, to all shoot of Leonardo's all yeah. sections so you know a lot of the Leonardo sections is maybe a very slow track or just a static camera and we let Peter come to us okay yeah you, know, give, you were cutting in a little bit too much cutting but there was I presume some you could uh, do yeah. uh, do from side to which side which actually we used that approach in quite a lot of the other filming as well which was bringing the action to the camera rather than camera to the action um, yeah. and letting things develop in front of the lens and you know in a way that's planned and that kind of optimizes the 3d but very much that rather than moving the camera around as much there's as one the street scene I remember one of the Italian street scene where I think people were almost uh, are performing to the, to the to the to the camera did you just sort of like sit and hope for lots of people or were they actually staged it came across very natural oh, well, if, I'm not sure which scene but <laughs> yes Basically, a lot of them were choreographed scenes with extras all yeah, lined up to do that stuff. Some of it was, you know, just doc, doc actuality yeah. as it happened. Right. Um, but yes, there was a mixture. And we kind of knew that we couldn't, on the sign of time scale we had to work on, we couldn't guarantee we'd get everything unless we choreographed a certain amount of it. So, well, it was seven, so that, that was the yeah. one thing. That, sorry, that, that, that's an interesting point. That was the mm. one big problem we had filming, which was just getting you know, we call B-roll, GVs, you know, just we went to Florence and you want to, we wanted to see Florence as Leonardo might have seen it as a young man, wow, this big city, lots of, you know, art and sexy people and, and so on. And, you know, in television, you just take a long lens, stick it on the front of your red, go and stand in a square, bang, 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 you know, people having coffee, just, you know, you just, you just rinse all this stuff, it, it, it's easy, you know, and then you have a nice lunch. But, um, this was, ju I mean, it was just so hard. We've got a camera that's like <laughs> enormous and about Trolleys f behind 15 the rest people. Of the year, and know. it's look, look, attractive couple drinking coffee across the square. <laughs> you know, kind of get over there, you know, and, and then the, oh, how, you know, it's just really difficult. So we had to kind of stage all this stuff. And, and so doing dock style shooting was really hard. You know, so to, the, the busiest part of the film is, I guess it's like a 20 second montage with about. 10 shots in it. I mean, it literally took us days to get those shots. I mean, it was, it was you know, okay. something, something yeah. that you wouldn't even think, you know, it's an afterthought in, in, in 2D was something that became quite a challenge because of the mobility. You know, mobility was a, bit, was a massive issue. I guess it feels like going back to the early days of television and filmmaking almost, where the, where the equipment was obviously so much uh, larger than what, uh, what we've all become used to. Yeah, it probably was like being on some kind of 1920s Hollywood sort of set or something. Max Ennis or something waiting, waiting, yeah. in, the, waiting in the wings. Uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about, uh, I guess, how, how you selected the, uh, the animators for that. Um, well, oh God, I'm not sure. Um, they're not, they're to get, I guess, what were you trying to, what were you trying to achieve? Because again, it's another juxtaposition from uh, uh, Capaldi doing his uh, uh, talk to camera, and uh, then we we see the, the the makings of his plans. Well, and that scene is different from any other animation in the film in that it's a three D modelled scene in stereo. I mean, generally we were very, you know, we kind of made a decision to to try and be as faithful as possible to Leonardo's work because. You know, it's all drawings at the end there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all the real drawings at the end. But in that scene, ev everything is, is a 3D model of one of Leonardo's real drawings. But um, I think that's probably the only... I, wa I wanted to make an action sequence there because I think it reflected Leonardo's 
quite childlike thinking, I thought, really, of, you know, I'm going to kill things and I'm going to blow things up. And it's, you know, it's almost like a little kid playing with his toy soldiers, I thought. And I think I wanted the... By the way, I'm a sculptor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wanted the graphics to, 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 to just go a bit over the top there to kind of, to kind of reflect that. But then that. in the first clip, you saw one of his drawings, which was just kind of gently pulled apart into, you know, to create that depth and some animation brought in to sort of bring it to life, but still very recognisably a Leonardo sketch in the same colours and, you know, and uh, through the film you have kind of a mixture of the two, but mostly it's the kind of sketches. And, and it feels the, the company that we went with, Township, they just had, when we went and met them the first time, we just loved their approach to the aesthetic on every project they did. It was kind of, it was just, a, you know, they obviously had a really good creative eye and approach to things. So in the end, the fact that we didn't do very much to a lot of the drawings was probably, the you know, was kind of part of their strength was just to kind of tease out, bring give it that volume so you felt you know you were there and but without doing too much and having everything flying around the whole time, okay. which is what we thought we might do, you know, in the first. Yeah, but technically, um, even though apart from that scene we haven't done much to them, it was very very difficult yeah. <laughs> and long-winded and painful for for those guys to not do very much to yeah. it because you know that they'd never done stereo before and it was, you know, that they. they worked hard to, 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 mm. to make all those. Let's do some questions. If, uh, if we have some microphones hopefully at the side, if you raise your hand, if you have anything uh, that you would like to ask, there's the gentleman just four places in there. We'll start with you, sir. Hi. Uh, th thanks a lot for the, the, the clips. They look fabulous. I mean, have you, have you both been inspired to work further in 3D? And if so, what genres, subject areas would you like to pick next? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's such a it's such a kick to be on the set and and you know look at things in in three D. Although I found that later on, I sort of after a while, I kind of stopped looking and co just concentrate. You know, I got kind of got over the novelty of it and just uh, and, and and trusted the stereographer and the and, and the DOP. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I think I've learned a lot from doing this, and and you know, in a way, I wish I could kind of make this all over again. Knowing what I do now, I suppose. I mean, I think you know, I would be a little perhaps Reboot, a little, to the, use the US. Yeah, uh, a little more term. adventurous, maybe. And I think you know, we, we we were possibly a bit conservative here and there, but um, I think, think you could apply the same style to another historical or even contemporary figure. Presumably. Yeah, well, that would be wonderful. Yeah, Michelangelo, that that would be good. Um, but um, yeah, I think just for in, in terms of creating kind of simple theatrical performance, that's. That's what I really enjoy doing, you know, trying to bring you closer to a character. So I, I would love to do more similar factual drama type type projects, I think. Um, yeah, and same, I loved it and I um, still get kind of goosebumps watching the finished product. And I have already moved on to another 3D project very, uh, you know, fortunately with Oxford Scientific. Um, um, and you so have you have to name the project now if it's only a work. I think title. I can name the project. Yeah, it's pandas 3D. So it's a kind of history of conservation of pandas in China. Um, and yeah, again, just a beautiful way to tell a story and give it that extra dimension. Um, so yes, I'm really enjoying it and would love to do more. I mean, again, I think every project has a natural place in terms of 2D, 3D, depending on you know its content, the storytelling, the budget, things like that. But, but where, where it's right and where you can do it, I do think 3D you know, can give you something wonderful, particularly natural, natural history, as you can see from our kind of, those are landscape shots of Tuscany. Oh, yes. You know, you just can't really argue with that. So that's, that's kind of how I feel about absolutely it, you know. Absolutely not. Well, let's take <laughs> another question if we have one. There's a, a lady, I think, up there. Um, Cosetta Lagani, Sky 3D Italia. Uh, I saw both the version of the, the documentaries in 2D and 3D and compliment it is great work. But uh, I noticed that uh, the two versions are quite different and in the 2D one uh, there are about 10 minutes more. The choice of uh, another, a third voice uh, external and I was wondering uh, uh, why this choice uh, and to make the two documentaries quite different. Uh, so I guess probably referring to, yeah, there was a, another version was made, um, a very different film for some of our partners, which was more where, where for a 2D version, uh, th I mean, there is a 2D version of this as well, but yeah. there's a 2D version where the basic performance elements and the material from this film was 
basically added sort of narration and talking heads to it to make it a more kind of traditional documentary, which which you know for, for which which some of the broadcasters wanted. So um, did they also take uh, this particular version, or was it normally they would go one one well, or the uh, other? Sky took. We call this the theatric cut because it is the kind of filmic version. And Sky took this, but put it out in two D on Sky Arts, three D on the three D channel. Um, uh, History in the States had a more documentary style for their 2D TV broadcast because they don't have a 3D channel, but have got the 3D theatric version, for hopefully for uh, right, cinema so distribution. Dis dis distributed and over BBC there. Worldwide took everything, of course, and which means actually all of their partners around the world can take both versions, one version. Because in terms, I'm thinking in terms of, uh, of of funding and the sustainability of the whole project, you still need to have a version in in 2D. Um, even if it's just, a, or do you do you feel that for, te for television purposes, do you do you feel you, you can be brave and just say, right, this is this is three D, it's all you're getting? Um, I think at the moment, because most broadcasters um, have the ability to put it out in two D as well, they're going to want that option. I mm. think so. I think that's probably where you are now. That um, I don't know. Maybe some people are commissioning straight three D TV without any two D versions associated. But I think that's probably unusual and I think the fact is you can make a 2D identical version or you can cut a slightly more traditional documentary style version which will also be very valuable to them so I think it's probably a bit of both still. Time, thank you. Time for one more question if we have one. There's a gentleman with a long hand at the top there. Hi, Tom Wilson, Emotion 3D. Uh, you mentioned that when you were shooting in Florence that uh, some of the shots took much longer. You couldn't just run over to the attractive couple having a cup of coffee. Uh, because the equipment was so bulky. So when you were making your production schedule, uh, how much extra time did you allow for making it in 3D, and uh, how much did you overrun? Oh, nice question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't overrun. We didn't overrun. <laughs> <laughs> how much did you extend your time period? Amazingly, right? we came in on budget, didn't we? Yes, well, yeah. <laughs> um, well, no, we, we actually managed to stick to our schedule. Uh, we worked long days, and we probably adjusted as we went along, you know, once we knew how much we could achieve. And it kind of, it did very much depend on what we were shooting on different days. Like on our first day, I remember, you know, we were all kind of nervous about how long everything was going to take. That We'd heard all the, you know, lens changing, and we were like going to stick with the lens. Anyway, and we did like 25 setups, and we were like, wow, we shot loads of stuff today, well great. And of course, we didn't do that every day. Um, but we just kind of, Julian was very good with, you know, our DOP and the serographer at just problem solving the situation to still be able to shoot it and get what we needed, really. Yeah, I mean, days we kept to the schedule, but days were wasted. We just didn't add more days to make up for them. Days were wasted, you know, trying to shoot in a more doco way that just wasn't working. And, you know, part, that's partly a 3D issue, but also partly a bad directing issue, you know, I'm <laughs> just not, not doing the right thing. And, and there was some kind of quick lessons to be learned and, and we kind of you know readjusted and, and shot in a, in, a, in a different way but um we have to yeah. wrap unfortunately oh, it's, it's um it's been good thank you very much indeed uh, please show your appreciation for helen and julian thank you very much thank you.